Okay, another mechanics question here. We've got a small ring of mass 0.25 kilograms. All the information is in the diagram. We've got tension, and the string is 1.2. It's in limited equilibrium. And we need to find the coefficient of friction. And the coefficient of friction between the ring and the rod is mu. So let's always start with what we're going to need to use. We're going to need to use F equals mu r, which I call F max. What can we label? This looks like the ring, so there's a normal reaction here. We've got 0.25g. Now, the ring is pulled upwards this way, so friction is going to act against. So that's going to be F. Let's just call that F max for friction. And that's going to equal mu r. Now let's resolve upwards, but let's label this. So up here, you've got 40. This is the opposite. So we use sine. So we're going to get 1.2 sine 40. And then this way, it's going to be 1.2 cos 40. That starts us off nicely. So let's find a normal reaction. So go up and down. So we're going to get R plus, we can see what else is going up, plus 1.2 sine 40. is going to equal the total weight going down which is 0.25g so let's just solve that so we're going to get r equals um, 1.7 newtons wonderful find the value of mu here so let's mu let's resolve this way for the friction so we know if we write this positive, we know 1.2 cos 40 has to equal this F max because the ring is in limiting equilibrium, so it's on the verge of moving. So that's actually going to equal approximately 0.919. So we must then use our F equals mu R. We have F. So we have our 0.919 equals uh, mu times 1.7 from our R here. So mu is going to equal 0.919 divided by 1.7. And that gives mu to be approximately... 0.55 or 0.548 depending on how you round and remember the coefficient of friction has to be less than one so the answer does make some sense and hopefully that one is not too bad okay so we have a heavy suitcase s of mass 50 kilograms moving along a horizontal floor so that means we resolve horizontally and vertically under the action of force magnitude p newtons that's the p newtons here that acts at 30 degrees to the floor and it's shown in the diagram above and s moves in a straight line at constant speed the suitcase is modeled as a particle and the floor as a rough horizontal plane if it's rough there is friction and we have the coefficient of friction between S, the suitcase and the floor is 3 over 5, calculate the value of P. Now let's be very careful using the S and uh, not mistaking it for 4 or 5. So let's do some labelling. We have mass 50G. Um, the P is pushing this way, so the friction, I'm going to call that F max, is acting against it. 
Now let's resolve horizontally and vertically. So this arrow this way is going to be that's the 30 here. That so this is the adjacent. That's going to be P cos 30. And this is P cos 30. We know downwards that is P summing 30. Now remember we've got a normal reaction R here. Now let's start. Let's resolve vertically and we know we're going to use F equals mu R. And I like to say F max. So what do we have? We have fifty G. So we have R equals fifty G plus P sine thirty. because that's acting down here and this is acting down wonderful now let's resolve across so what's this F that means we're going to use this square as positive and we're going to get F equals P cos 30 this way That's all we know so far. Now. Okay, so the key point is the coefficient of friction is 3 over 5. So we know we have F equals... Um, mu r so f equals 3 over 5 r let's get some method marks right there so we know f equals p cos 30 so we're going to get p cos 30 is going to equal 3 over 5 R and we've got R from above so we've got 50 G plus P sine 30 so we need to solve for P how do we solve for P we've got P here P here it's changing the subject we're going to expand all that out 3 over 5 so we're going to get 30G um, plus 3 over 5P sine 30. Let's get all the P's together. So P cos 30 minus 3P over 5 sine 30 equals 30G. Um, so we can take P out, so let's take P cos 30 minus 3 over 5 sine 30 equals 30 G. So divide all that out, if you solve that you will get P equals 520 or 519 newtons both are acceptable and that's your nine marks so that is doable once you pick up the skill so all we're doing is resolving across and up and down and these ones are quite nice now let's have a look at this question we have a particle O and it's in equilibrium under these three coplanar forces. 
they have these magnitudes and act along OA, OB and OC respectively calculate the value to one decimal place of theta now this you might not know what to do but what can we do this is in equilibrium we need to know find angle theta there's more than one way to do this but I'm going to call that X here now, this is X that's the right angle um, that's hypotenuse adjacent opposite so we know that um, this is going to be 12 sine x and it's going to be acting this way so what can we use with this well we're resolving up and down and let's resolve vertically the sine is positive so that means resolving as positive we get 12 sine x equals what's acting down is this 8 here you can see so sine x is going to equal 8 over 12 so x inverse sine that is going to be 41.8 now we've got a straight line here so theta must be 180 minus 41.8 which is 138.2 wonderful that is a nice three marks that we can all get the value to two best decimal places of x well this is going this way so let's resolve left and right this is only acting down so we have to act this way what's happening here we can see here that's cos so that's 12 cos x which was which we know is 41.8 so let's resolve this way as positive so x is going to equal 12 cos 41.8 so x equals 8.94 newtons and that's another three marks and we can all do that wonderful now let's have a read this question you've got two forces 4i minus 5j and pi plus qj acts on a particle p of mass m and the resultant of the two forces is r given that r acts in a direction which is parallel to the vector i minus 2j now if you remember from vectors if it's parallel then r could be any kind of scale that's m minus 2j now find the angle r between r and the vector j so this is imagine this is the vector j here that's j but it's going in the i direction it's parallel to i so that's i and that's minus 2j so we want this angle here and this angle here so if we make a right angle here color that in so you can see because it's very easy to make a mistake on this so um, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent which is oh this is the angle here opposite is the 2 over 1 so theta equals 63.4 now reminder we want this whole angle here so we have to add 9 to it 90 to it so angle is going to be 63.4 add 90 which equals 153.4 degrees now it says show that 2p plus q plus 3 equals 0 so 2p is related to here and q is here now if we add up everything in terms of i here we can see we get some type of 4 plus p i because we know uh, it's going to be some multiple of this uh, vector because it's parallel to it 
and we can say plus we've got the Q here QJ minus 5J so we're going to say that's plus Q minus 5J now if you don't understand this you might need to look back at vectors in um, mechanics 1 right now we know I in relation to 2J is um, a factor of minus 2 so 2 lots of minus I so we take I out 2 lots of minus I so we're going to say minus 2 lots of I is going to be equivalent to the Q minus 5 in terms of J now if we solve that we get minus 8 plus minus 2P equals Q minus 5 that's minus 8 minus 2p equals q minus 5. Now, if we add 8, add 2p to both sides, we're going to get um, 2p plus q plus 3 equals 0. And that question is done. Now, it says Q equals 1, given that also Q equals 1 and P moves with an acceleration of this magnitude, 8 to the root 5 meters per second squared, find the value of M. So let's let Q equals 1 first and substitute into here. So even if we're not sure what we're doing, we can at least earn some method marks and these will be valuable. So 2P equals minus 4 p equals minus 2 now if we resolve this into here we know the resultant of the two forces is r so we now have 4i minus 5j um, minus 2i plus j because q is 1 we substituted it all into here at the top we're going to get 2i minus 4j. That's what r is going to equal. Now it's got a magnitude of acceleration of this. So the magnitude, if we remember, we're going to use uh, Pythagoras theorem. So that's the square root of uh, 2 squared plus minus 4 squared. So that's going to equal um, square root of 20. Now remember, F equals MA. So that magnitude of force is root 20. So root 20 equals um, M times 8 root 5. Divide by 8, oop, 8 root 5. Divide by 8 root 5 so m equals a quarter and that's kg equals 0.25 kg I hope that helps and you could see even if you couldn't do the rest of the question you could do some of this based on the answers they give you before so do always see what marks you can earn every few is critical and crucial